and it is low, ball one, to Lloyd Mosby. This ball game is underway. Down here in the Lone Star State, Mosby, who hit 328 for the springtime. Left-hand hitter, as you know, facing the young right-hander, Guzman, delivers a swing and a fly ball into left center field. Over is McDowell, the center fielder. He's there. He'll take it backing up. And there's one down. Just over a week ago, fielder told on a Sunday night, we're going to uh, send you out. The next morning said, no, we're going to keep you here for the time being. And then yesterday told, you're going to be the D.H., in the opening night lineup for the Toronto Blue Jays. I'll tell you, it could be an emotional roller coaster ride. Don Gordon getting the news yesterday from manager Jimmy Williams. Gordo, you've, you've made the team. He was standing out there with a ball in one hand and a glove on the other, and he slapped that ball into that glove, and everybody sitting in the dugout could read the gesture. A happy young man. Lefty Steve Davis, he's here. Mark Eichhorn, the big right-hander. To a lesser degree, Kelly Gruber. He knew pretty much from the start that he had to play himself off the team. Here's Fernandez, and he'll look at a strike. Tony Fernandez, a 258 swing time hitter. Out of action, of course, with that injured foot. Swings, and he fouls it back, strike two, one and two. I had breakfast yesterday with... John McLaren, who's down in that third base coaching box, and I said, John, you're one of the homesteaders here. You've come up through the ranks. You've got to feel good about being out there as the third base coach for the Blue Jays tomorrow night. He said, I feel good. And he says, I really feel good for my, my wife, Ann. There's a swing and a grounder down to first. O'Brien picks it up, and Fernandez is retired two down. He said, from time to time over the years, she would despair a little bit, wondering about this baseball business and how long it takes to work your way up the ladder, and I would tell her, well, it's, it is a time-consuming thing. You have to pay your dues, but there he is now, number 24 down there. Another spring training camp, some casualties along the way, and here's the remaining 24. Lance Mullinex up there to take a strike, batting 333. Over the springtime, four homers, eight runs batted in. The opening night third baseman, Guzman, winds and he works and he's high with this delivery 1-1. One, one. O'Brien at first, Hera at second, opening his 16th campaign. Bouchelle at third, Wilkerson the shortstop. Ward in left, McDowell in center, and Covilla in right and slot behind the plate. Guzman delivers low and the count is 2-1. and one. This ball game is being beamed down to Puerto Rico, where the young right-hander hails from. So down there, they're listening in tonight as the soon-to-be 23-year-old rookie makes his opening night appearance here against the Blue Jays. A swing and a fly ball hit shallow at the center field. McDowell is under it. He's there. He'll take it. And the Blue Jays go three up, three down. At the end of a half inning, there's no score in Arlington. Dan, be sure and use that Blue Jays charge line. That number is 595-1362. Order your single game tickets by phone for any regular season home game using Visa, MasterCard, or American Express. Yvonne Calderon leads off the Mariners' fourth inning, and Jimmy Key's curveball is high, ball one. The Blue Jays have given Jimmy Key now one run lead to work with, four to three. Calderon lined out the Key back in the second inning. Left hand is pitched, and Calderon jumps away from ball two. 2-0. Eight times of 11 hitters, he has fallen behind the hitter, 1-0. So Jimmy has not pitched that well so far, leading off the strikes. And Calderon punches the 2-0 pitch to right field. It's into the corner, playable for Barfield. He drifts over, and he makes the catch. <laughs> Swift officially goes three and two-thirds innings today. Charged with four runs, earned on seven hits. Strikes out two and walks two and hits a man. Ruderman picked him up, and right now, Billy Swift the pitcher record. Here's Danny Carnival, who's all for one. Right-handed hitter does the limbo, and he takes inside ball one. And there's Key again, for him to start a hitter off with a strike. Oh, 
game, the Southpaw's fastball is high, 2-0. Oh. Just to finish that National League side of our scoreboard, Pittsburgh, in 12 innings, had Houston today, 4-3. Four 4-3 to three. Four three Pittsburgh. Fastball punch foul off to the right and back into the crowd. And off here be Delaney in the convention line in almost 2-1 with a run in the top of the ninth inning, leading the Rays at Atlanta, 2-1. The Reds finally stopped the Mets, winning 3-2, and they beat a good one in Dwight Gooden. The 2-1 pitch, strike two called on the inside edge. The Reds three, the Mets two. In the last ten games coming into this one, the Mets were 9-1, and one, the Reds were 1-9. But so that turned around today in New York. The 2-2 offering a curve, a check swing foul, and it will come back behind home plate. Roll over the Mariners' blue, white, and yellow logo, commemorating their 10th anniversary, and then hit the track here, the rubberized track behind the plate. So the Mets are now 20 and 5, and they will have to win 15 straight to match the Tigers' start in 1984. The 2 2 pitch swing and a miss. He struck him out with a good old fastball. Two down, and Jimmy Key records his third strikeout. <laughs> Bill Gallickson, the ex-Expo, on that one for the Reds, beating Gooden. St. Louis had San Francisco 4-3. The Cubs beat San Diego 9-5, and the Montreal Expos are hosting the Dodgers. And with the LA Dodgers batting in the ninth inning, the Expos 4, the Dodgers 3. 4-3 four, three Expos have won seven straight. Matters especially any swings and he misses strike one. To tell you how things can go, the Blue Jays here are finding things very difficult. You make a mistake that the opponents capitalize. Herb Winningham last night in extra innings had the delayed steal sign on as a batter. He missed it, and when the infield was moving, he grounded a base hit in to the outfield to win the game. Thus, he takes inside line one. He said afterwards, yes, I missed the sign. I was supposed to take the pitch. Instead, I swung through, got a base hit, we win the game, and that's how things have been going when you win seven in a row. Jimmy Williams would like to have a little of that on his side, maybe starting the day. Key back to Presley, and it's inside, two and one. Bottom of inning number four, the Blue Jays four, the Mariners three. Presley double, high top the white hill wall and scored a run back in the Mariners' three-run third inning. That overcame a 2 nothing deficit. 2-1 pitch and blowing outside, ball three. In the third, the Blue Jays scored a pair to get on the board. Garcia's ground out, drove home Lee to a single, and then Fernandez to a double score on a base hit up the middle by Lloyd Mosby. But the Mariners rallied for three to take the lead at that time. Presley hits a high fly ball into center field. Mosby, who went back a step now, comes in, has no problem, puts it away, and the inning is over. Buffett, one ball and one strike here, leading off the Blue Jays' second inning, batting 306, four hummers, and 16 runs batted in. Toronto leading 2-1. to one. Nico, the right-hander, delivers, and up the this is outside. Two balls and one strike to Cliff. Nick Roy looks down to Bingo. The 2-1 pitch of floater low. The count is 3-1. Boston's a half game up on the New York Yankees on this day in baseball. California one game up on the Texas Rangers in the West. The pitch misses up and in, and he's walking. Third walk given up by Nitro. And guess who leads their division by the widest margin right now? Who would have thought back there on opening day that the answer to that question would be the Houston Astros? They are three and a half up. Wait a minute, I beg your pardon. No, they're three and a half up on Atlanta, but uh, San Francisco is uh, right up there tucked in close behind him. The, the widest margin is the three-game lead by the New York Mets. Ernie Witt takes the pitch off slide ball on. 
The New York Mets lead Montreal by three. So Houston and Reno look right past San Francisco. They are right behind Houston. All right, pitches in there for a strike, one and one. All right, I'll rephrase the question. Who would have thought back on opening day that Houston and San Francisco would have been one, two, leading the pack in the West? One, one pitch. Foul back out of play by Witt. A couple of new managers and they're doing a nice job. Atlanta and San Diego, three and a half back in the National League West. The Dodgers, four and a half back. And Cincinnati, nine back. Witt pops it up. Mando chases it back. The Pets in the seats. And all two strikes on the batter. The widest margin, top to bottom, in a divisional race right now is again in the National League East, where the Mets lead the last place Cardinals by 10 and a half. The one two delivery. Popped up on the infield, left side. Franco is there. And he takes it for the out. One away. And here comes Tony Fernandez for his first at bat this afternoon. Tomorrow in Chicago, it'll be John Cerruti making his first big league start of the year against White Sox right-hander Joel Davis, who is 1-1. One one. Wednesday, Alexander draws Neil Allen. And Thursday, Jimmy Key against Rich Dotson. Here's a pitch to Tony. A swing and a chopper out to Bernizard at second. He'll go to the shortstop for one. And that's all they will get. Flip Johnson had uh, Franco's attention. Franco was looking for the big slide by Cliff, a takeout slide. Franco didn't bother trying to make a play at first. And maybe Cliff would ran by him and yelled, boo. I don't know. But uh, Franco showed Johnson a little respect and gave him a pretty wide leeway right there. Here's out. Goes uh, four to six. Fernandez at first base on the fielder's choice. And there's a missed sign or something. As Bando looked like he wanted to pitch out, and the pitch was on the inside corner, so Bando goes out to Nico and says, let's talk about it before I get mean back here. One and oh on Garcia, who took the pitch way inside. Fernandez, the runner at first base. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fly ball, right field. Scope pretty good. Back there is Carter. He reaches and he takes for the out to retire the slide. It was 0 for 6 in last night's ball game. So he has dropped down to third. And he has the league in uh, hitting. He will leave it off here. Facing right hander Jim Pinesy. And Clance misses down the new ball one. Puckett is hitting 363. 14 homers, 35 runs batted in. Here's the pitch, down and in again. The leader in the American League in hitting now is Boggs of Boston at 373. And Robin Young, second at 371. Young, of course, of Milwaukee. 63 isn't too shabby, you understand. We'll look at the strike. Two and one. For the twins, it'll be Puckett, Smalley, and Herbert. Top third of the order. Puckett, Smalley, and Herbert. Puckett in center field. Smalley to DH tonight. Herbert at first base. There's the pitch. The swing and a big chopper for the shortstop. Fernandez took it to first and leaps with the stretch. Loves it to the out. Puckett, Smalley, Herbick, then Vernansky in right field. Randy Bush will be in left field. Gaetti is at third base. Lombardozzi, the second baseman. Jeff Reed, 
will catch tonight. And Greg Gagne is the shortstop. Puckett, Smalley, Herbert, Wernanski, Bush, Gaetti, Tom Bergozzi, Reed, and Gagne. There's Smalley to take ball one. Smalley chipped in with a big double that tied the ball game up last night. He takes a strike, one and one. We know the ball game is a pinch hitter. In the sixth inning, rounded out in his first at bat. But then in the eighth inning, he tied it at six with a double down the left field line, a slicer. Here's the two one offering to Smalley, a swing, and he hits one off the bat handle into the seat, strike two, two and two. I had an occasion to be over in the uh, Minnesota clubhouse and in their training room. Before tonight's game, Roy Smalley has quite a pregame routine that he goes through. 2-2 two -two pitch. And outside, 3-2. He's had a bad back for years, but he's got some knees that aren't exactly the best either. And they wire him up with some kind of pads on his, uh, on his knees and then give him some electrical charges to stimulate the muscles in there. 3-2 pitch, swing and a foul back. Looked like the center of Frankenstein right in there. Speaking of sons, let's talk about daughters here for just a moment. The Grahams have had a firstborn, Mark and Catherine. Here's the pitch. Line the left field, base hit. Smalley's on with a base wrap. Falls in in front of George Bell. Mark Grin is the Blue Jay supervisor of office services. He and White Catman are to be congratulated on the birth of Shannon, their first child, this morning at 12.17 a.m. Mother and daughter are just fine. Says here the dad's a complete wreck. Now, Mark, you'll get over there. Congratulations to the whole team. The batter is Herbert. Ken Herbert getting 287. Nine homers, 28 runs batted in. One out, runner at first base. No score. A swing and a liner. And taken by Garcia on the fly. He throws it to first. Not in time to get small and going back in. The ball was in the dirt and bounced off the chest of uh, Rick Leach. Herbert lines out to the second baseman. When that ball took off, I thought it was over down his head. But he caught it on the fly and then tried to double up Smalley. And Smalley was scooting back to uh, first base. So Herbert's retired. Two down. And here is Tom Berlinski. Tom will try to make a knock down and throw there. Might have been better off just to catch it, find himself, and throw a good hard throw to first. He may have had him. Here is the pitch to Bernanski. A throw and a foul off to the third base side. Strike one. That was frightening, Tom. And in this ballpark especially, Ken Herbie takes that biggest swing, and then after he hits one off the end of the bat. Well, I thought he was going to do some business with him with that, but the ball just did not have the tight on it, but it looked like when it took off at the plate. There's a pitch off the glove of Whip. He has to go get it, and Smalley will go down to second base. And that will probably be charged a pass ball to Ernie Whip. Looked like the ball was all but in the net, and it was. It will be a pass ball. We just saw a replay up there, and he tried to look like close the mid on it before it was in the pocket. So, Bohansky, the batter, with a one on count on. And now, we're in scoring position. The pitch is down and in. Two and one. There's one of those old things again creeping up early in the ball game. The way the Blue Jays have been playing, the opponents have been capitalizing on just little things like that. That is Ernie Rook's second pass ball of the season. The pitch swung on, popped way up in the air. And Tony Fernandez, the shortstop, surrounds it. He's got it, and that'll retire the side. No runs, a hit, one man is left. We take along with Jerry Haworth and our producer.
producer Lonnie Bancroft out here in Anaheim, California. Neil Wilson back at the controls in our Toronto studio. The Blue Jays are trailing by a 5-2 to two count here to the California Angels. John Candelaria will be facing Buck Martinez to lead it off here in the fifth inning. Buck has had one at bat and he flies out to left field. Candelaria delivers a breaking ball inside, ball one. Candelaria was acquired last year from Pittsburgh in a five-player deal. He was 2-4 and four with the Pirates. The pitch is high, the count is 2-0. and oh. He went seven and three the rest of the way for California. There's a swing and a foul back. And it's right down below us here. Two balls, one strike. Martinez at the plate, batting 180. Pitch is outside to count three and one. One of those interstate batting averages, I-80. The pitch on the way, swinging a foul back up on the screen. Tom, they just announced here that in Dave Steve's three and two-thirds innings, he threw 99 pitches. Mm. It's almost unheard of. Oh, it sure is. It's a ball game when he's right. Fly ball left field. Back is downing. Back at the track. And he jumps to make the play. Buck Martinez tied into one. He sent down into the track. But it did not have the legs to get up and over that wall. There's one down here in the Blue Jay fifth end. Martinez made some pretty good contact right there. Downing followed it back. Unlike the Bell home run, though, a towering shot that was just beyond the fence, this one fell just short. Kelly Gruber, 0 for his last 21, takes a pitch outside, ball one. The pitch on the way, swing, and this one won. Last time the Blue Jays were as close as eight and a half back was on the 20th day May, and he lost to the White Sox 2-1, to one. and there's a swing on this by Gruber, 1-2 and two on the bang. That was in John Cerruti's first start of the year at Chicago. He pitched well, but he lost. Cerruti was supposed to pitch here tomorrow, but he's gone home to be with his wife, who is anticipating the arrival of their firstborn. Swing and a miss by Gruber, strike three. Fourth strikeout for Candelaria. Gruber is all for his last 22. And with two down, nobody on. Here comes the hottest of the hot. Two for two today. Tony Fernandez batting a lusty 318. So Saruti will not be here for his start tomorrow. Joe Johnson, the right-hander. Acquired from the Atlanta Braves will be the starter. The pitch is foul back out of play. The stork is beginning to seriously disrupt the pitching plans of manager Jimmy Williams. Tom Hickey hasn't rejoined the club yet. At least he had when we came on the air today. There's a fly ball right field. Hernandez flies out to Rupert Jones, backing up. The Blue Jays go quickly and quietly, three up, three down. And after four and a half, the bottom of the eighth inning will find a defensive change. Garth Orich, who ran for Rance Mullinex and scored on the Barfield two-run home run, will remain in the game at third base. The crowd here this afternoon, 11,485, 11,485. And Scott Bradley will take his best shot at big right-hander Jim Clancy, who has a 6-2 lead. Fast ball down and away to Bradley, ball one. Bradley has walked and lined out on a hop to second, where Garcia threw him out. But he's officially 0 for 1. He hits a high fly ball into shallow left field. Rick Leach comes in, settles on this, taps the glove, and makes the catch. 
Mike Moore, the starting pitcher today, goes seven and two-thirds innings, charged with six runs, four of them earned on eight base hits. Struck out six, he walked one, and gave up his 21st home run to Barfield with a man on in the top of his eighth inning. The Mariners led in this game two to nothing at the end of one on a home run by Ken Delft. He hit the first pitch with a man aboard into the right center field seat. And the Mariners have been cooled off since. Fancy fastball hits the outside edge to Spike Owen, strike one. Spike is hit into a double play and lined out to second baseman Domaso Garcia. Third ball is inside. Ball and strike. Molinex single in the third inning got the Blue Jays on the board. That drove home Fernandez. And the rally with two down and no one on. And that was reproduced in the seventh inning. Two down, nobody on. That ball is high. Wood doubled. Shepard ran for him and Luke pounded the base hit the right to tie it up. Then Leap scored as Garcia hit a chopper up along third and Presley threw it down the right field line with Leap scoring all the way from first. Clancy pitches a strike on the outside edge. It's two and two. That big air not only allowed that run to score, but it allowed Fernandez to single the right to drive home Garcia, make it four two blue chase, and then the Barfield two run shot in the eighth. Two two pitch. Down ball into the hole between third and short. Backhanded by Fernandez. But he does not have a play on the studio. Six runs, eight hits for the Blue Jays, two runs, five hits for the Mariners, and the two errors. And one interesting play as well after Fernandez singled the right field to drive home a run. Tony went to second base as a good runner should. The throw was cut off, allowing the run to score. And Tony, in the elongated rundown, was finally thrown out 9 3 6, 4 3 4, 6 2. Harold Reynolds, the batter, a fastball down and away, ball one. Reynolds has struck out and lined out to second base. He's 0 for 2. And 0 for 10 in the series. Pitch is low to him, 2 and 0. Reynolds in three games has yet to hit a ball out of the infield. Six ground outs, a pop up, a foul out, and a couple of strikeouts. He takes a strike and it's 2 and 1. Clancy has been superb. He has struck out four, walked only one, scattered five hits, burned only on the Phelps home run in the first. Fastball is low, three and one. Jimmy has won four in a row coming into this start, and he's coming off a two to nothing win against the Angels in his last start when he went eight in the third inning. Mark Eichhorn saved it for him. He's high ball four. And we'll see if that will get the bullpen activated. Two on for the Mariners. This is a small ballpark, and sure enough, there'll be a stir down the left field line. And it is Dave Steve who will begin to work now with bullpen coach John Sullivan. Manager Jimmy Williams will come hiking out to the mound from the first base dugout. Here are the Blue Jays leading 6-2 to two in the bottom of the eighth inning with one out. And of course the on-deck hitter now, Phil Bradley, suddenly represents the game's tying run. And here, with very short power alleys in left and right center, anything can happen. Jimmy has had his say, he will get back to the dugout. Moses is 0 for 3. He's a switch hitter and in his last 10 games has been hitting 357. 
for the year 274 hitter. 4 of 15 with men in scoring position, and there are runners at first and second. A slider is inside, ball one. Last night, Icorn, Hank E. Codlin Clark, followed Jimmy Key after the Saruti complete game win on Monday night. The Key trying to pick up the pen as well as fancy should he be used. Fastball check swing foul down the left field line. Into the crowd of 11,000 plus. Down a ball and a strike. The Blue Jays have turned a couple of double plays. They're looking for a third. Fancy checks the runner second. Here he comes. And hit line to center field. Mosley on the run. Makes the catch. And Owen has to hustle back to second with Reynolds coming back to first. A line drive, but Mosley well positioned. Started in a few steps and he made the catch reaching down around the knees. Two down. We go back to the bar field home run in the top of this eighth inning with a man aboard. It certainly changes his bottom of the eighth. A four-run lead is a lot different than a two-run lead in this small dome. Bradley has grounded it out three times. Right-hander against right-hander. Fastball well, taken for a strike. Ozzie Virgil coaching at third, Darren Johnson at first. Two runners on base at first and second. Nancy trying to bow his neck here in the bottom of the eighth. Here he comes, change up landed between third and short. A base hit in the left field. Owen gets called up at third. He almost ran into Garth Orr to his position in front of the bag. He made Owen run around him, and by that time the issue was settled. He could not come home, even if he wanted to. So the bases are loaded for Jim Presley. Watch out. Presley is two for three off Clancy today. A couple of singles. He struck out in the sixth inning to give him 105 for the team lead. He came into this three-game series in a horrendous slump, two for 24. But in this series now, he is 5 for 12, and he will not see Clancy. Here comes Jimmy Williams. He has already pointed to the bullpen. And Dave C., who's had all kinds of troubles this year, including a relief appearance for the first time since October of 80 when he gave up a two-run home run to Jose Canseco, will come in here with the game on the line. Well, I was just sitting here thinking Jimmy has himself in a situation if he does not want to bring Steve into a game with the pressure on, he has sure left himself uh, in a predicament because the only pitcher he had up in the bullpen was Dave Steve, who takes the ball from Jim Clancy, and sure enough, the Seattle Mariners rolled up the bases, so Steve will be the man, and Wesley was two for three against Jim Clancy, all that part of Jimmy Williams' thinking, so there's two ways of looking at giving Steve a psychological bo uh, boost. One is to ease him into the, uh, the situation to regain the confidence. The other is to put him in there when the game is on the line and let him respond, and we'll find out. Now, this will all unfold now with right-hander Dave Steve coming out of the bullpen. And the last time Steve came out of the bullpen, the first pitch he threw was hit over the fence. Let's hope that the fates will treat him a little more kindly here this afternoon because Presley represents the tying run as he will be coming to the plate here against Dave Steve. For David, in total, this marks his 22nd outing, second time out of the bullpen. He is, of course, 2-10. and 10. Any good baseball fan anywhere is aware of that. He has an earned run average of 5.78. Dave has worked a total of 120 innings. He and Clancy, as a matter of fact, had 120 apiece coming in here today. The leader in that regard is 
Jimmy Key, 127 and a third. The thing that has hurt Dave Steed most of all has been the Gopher Ball. He has given up 23 home runs, and he has a prolific young home run hitter at the plate in Jim Presley. This is getting interesting. This will be the at bat of the game for the Mariners to try and get back in it. They're down 6 to 2. Presley in his career against Dave Steed is 2 for 15, but. The two base hits are a home run and a double. And he leads his club with 19 home runs. He's hitting 275. Base is loaded two down. Bottom of the eighth inning, 6 2 Blue Jays. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. A fastball, and Tesla is behind on the count, 0 and 1. He with a good thinking fastball, and Tesla went down and did not get it. Owen at third, Reynolds at second, Bradley at first. He both feet on the rubber. Leading catcher Buck Martinez. He starts into his windup. The 0-1 pitch. Slider top foul for the Mariners' third base dugout. And Steve has really done himself a favor. Getting ahead of a good hitter 0-2. And Steve against the Mariners. This tiny kingdom with the wall second. It had only four games all year without a home run. None in this series. Save the windup. Here's the 0 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. A three-quarter swing. Tesla goes down on the appeal. And Dave Steve on three pitches has struck out Jim Tesla with the bases loaded. What a job by Steve to pick up Jim Clancy in the bottom of the eighth inning. So the frame is over. The Mariners turned away. They lose two singles and a walk aboard, and Steve may be back. Who knows? It's only a hitter, but it's a start. And with Tom coming up for the ninth inning here in Seattle, <laughs> Tony Fernandez, the leadoff batter, as we go to the sixth inning. Tony today has had an infield hit, a stolen base, and flying out the left. The left-hander, Kurt Young. Lines and he works, and his fastball is a strike taken by Fernandez, 0-1. Young works from the extreme third base side of that pitching rubber. Now he moves down in front of that rubber to smooth out a rough spot on the mound. The new pitching mound we were talking about earlier that was installed this year. From Sacramento, there's a fastball strike, nothing in two. Tony Fernandez questioning the Al Clark call there. He didn't like the first pitch call the strike, and he surely didn't like that one. And he let Clark know it. Now he settles back into the box. Here's the pitch on the way, and it's a fastball outside, one and two on the batter. Gentleman's got a problem, he needs a new glove. And we'll take a moment to remind you that it takes a lot to make your mark here in the big leagues. And in shoes, the league leaders are Mark II shoes by German. Mark II shoes traditionally score high, and they are style winners every time. So you ask for Mark II's at better shoe stores everywhere. Gentleman's got himself a new catcher, Smith. Tony has a one and two count on him, the leadoff batter here in the top of the sixth inning. The pitch on the way, and a swing and a fly ball into center field, taken by Murphy for the out. Up on the message board, it says, a special A's welcome to the Sacramento kid. Now, I wonder who that would be. Ronald Reagan? Not Martinez, maybe. Maybe Buck, yeah, could be. Sacramento kid. Garth Orge fouls off the first pitch, strike one, reaching for the ball and followed off to the third base side. Damaso Garcia waiting on deck. We are scoreless here with the Blue Jays batting in the top of the sixth inning. One out, nobody on. Young winds and he works and the pitch is outside, one and one.
Sacramento is the capital of this great state of California. There's a foul off. One and two on the batter. California is two states, really, when you come out here and you visit Anaheim and you visit Oakland, you get a real sense of that. Southern California and Northern California. Over the years, there have, has even been talk about having a North and South California like North and South Carolina as two separate states. And the pitch is fouled off, one and two. Don't know that that will ever come to be. Southern California would have to buy their drinking water from Northern California. The one-two pitch is a swing and a missed strike three as uh, Tettleton took the tag on uh, Guy Forge to complete the strikeout. That is a third strikeout for Young, and that brings Garcia to the plate. Domaso has flied out to right and flied out to center this afternoon. Boy, these two lefties, Jimmy Key and Kurt Young, are just flat doing it right now. Pitches down and in, ball one. It would be tough to say who's out pitching who at this moment. And they're both cruising. Fast ball strike on the outside corner. Kurt Young really lays on that fastball, but from the hitter's perspective, he changes the speeds on it just enough to keep you off balance. You just can't get keyed in on him. There's a strike to Garcia. One and two on the batter. And Dave Duncan said it best of all, control and changing speeds. The forte of Mr. Kurt Young, and that's what he's been all about here, pinpoint control. Taking a little bit off the fastball, just getting the hitters timing off enough to hold them at bay as Garcia fouls him off. Jimmy Key this afternoon has had a good fastball and a beautiful curveball. Here's the pitch on the way. And it's outside, two and two. It looks like Seaver and Sutton brought their good stuff, at least in the early going down in Anaheim, because in the third inning, down in uh, Southern California, it's scoreless. The Red Sox with Seaver and the Cal Angels with Sutton, which is fouled out of play by Garcia. Baltimore, Shellac, Chicago, 11 to 3. New York beat Minnesota 4-1. Foul back. Kansas City slowed the Tigers down, beat them 5-4 in Detroit today. Over the National, it was Pittsburgh whitewashing San Francisco 7-0. Cardinals beat the Padres 3-2. Mets over Atlanta 5-1. Swing and a fly ball in the center field. Right there is Murphy for the second time today. Garcia has flied out to Dwayne Murphy. We up three down Blue Jays. The A's will bat in the bottom of the six in a scoreless ball game. We have just a beautiful day here in Oakland, and we want you to have a great time this summer on beautiful days. We have it 